All right, this is a video for how to make clay maracas. So the materials you need to start, you need a fatling knife, it's a clay knife, a needle tool, a wooden tool, one of the sponges that looks like this. This is for cleaning our, our tools off. You're gonna need an elephant ear sponge. You're gonna need a container of slip, which is liquid clay. You're obviously gonna need some clay. Um, eventually you're gonna need some paper towels as well. So to get started with this, for, to make the maraca, we need to make two pinch pots to start. So I'm gonna take my clay, I'm gonna cut it in half, and then I'm gonna cut a little bit of extra off one of the two pieces. I'm gonna use this section um, to make my beads when I get there. So I'm just gonna move my tools out of the way. So for making a pinch pot, you wanna take um, some of this clay and you're gonna kinda of roll it so it gets round. So hopefully some of you have made pinch pots before. You know that you need to start with a ball of clay. <clears throat> you can kind of roll it on the table if you need. All right, so I've got my ball of clay here. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna pretend here with my fingers in a second, and I'm gonna take my two thumbs and I'm gonna drop my thumbs into the clay, okay? And so I should, I don't wanna put my thumbs all the way through the clay or else I'll put a hole in this ball but I wanna go almost all the way. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use one hand. One hand's gonna hold the clay and the other one's going to pinch. So I'm gonna use my fingers and my thumb and I'm gonna pinch the walls thinner, okay? So I'm gonna drop my thumbs in the clay like so. So yeah, I have a hole in here. And I'm gonna use one hand to hold and I'm gonna use the other thumb and fingers to start to pull those walls up. When you're making a pinch pot, the goal is to have an even thickness of your walls. You don't want it to be really thick down here at the bottom, at the base. You want it nice and even all the way. Okay, there's one. I'm gonna take the other one. And so what you end up need, you, what you need to end up doing is having two pinch pots. One should be a little bit bigger than the other. Okay, now I have two pinch pots. One's larger than the other. Now I'm gonna check it. So what's gonna happen is this one, the smaller one, needs to fit on the inside. So I've got a little problem here. It's not fitting perfectly. So what I can do is just make this one a little bit bigger. And so depending on how much clay you get, it depends on the size of your maraca or the size of your pinch pots. Okay, that looks better. Let's see about that. Okay, you see how that fits on the inside? So that's perfect. So now I'm ready to attach these two um, pinch pots together. So anytime we do something with clay and you want it to attach, we do something called slip and score. So scoring, you use your needle tool, and all scoring is, <clears throat> is roughing up the surface that you're gonna connect. So I know that this smaller pinch pot is gonna fit within here. So the edge that it's gonna touch is the inside. So I'm going to score this. So scoring is, kind of looks like cross hatching, or a little um, X's. So I'm going to work on this. Okay, now I'm ready to score this one. Remember that this is fitting on the inside here, so I need to, whoops, I need to score on the outside edge. <clears throat> okay, so these are done. So now, before I can put these two together, I need to make all my little beads which are gonna be on the inside. So you're gonna take your other little piece of scrap clay that you have, and I want you to start to make little round pieces of clay. And they can be different sizes. So these are the beads which are gonna make the sound as they hit the edge of the, the sides of the maraca. So I'm gonna make a bunch of these, okay? So I've got some made here. All right, so do you see how this is on a paper towel? <clears throat> we don't want these beads to stick to the walls, so what we want to do is actually wrap them 
in some paper towel or Kleenex would work too. So I'm just going to put a few of them together, kind of separate them, put a few of them together. And put them in here and do some more. So this paper towel is going to burn off in the kiln, so you don't have to worry about it. So I'm going to put a few more. I actually have some that are dried. I'm going to try some of these as well, so I'm going to put some of these in here too. Okay, so now I'm ready to attach these two together. So I need to put slip, that's that liquid clay, I need to put slip on one of the two pinch pots over top of the score marks. So let's do this one. You just apply some right over top of your score marks. You only have to put it on one side. Okay, so I'm ready to put scored sides together. Apply a little bit of pressure. I'm not pushing with all my might, but I'm applying a little bit of pressure so this really will stick. Okay, so I've got this connected and that's looking pretty ugly. So now what I need to do is smooth this out. So I'm going to take this pinch pot that was larger and has got a lot of extra clay here. I'm going to start to smooth that out into the smaller pinch pot. So you can use your fingers. Obviously those are great tools. You can also use the wooden tools, and these are some of the ones that I like the best. So, you know, make sure they're nice and clean, clean them off on your sponge, and then use these to pull some of that extra clay down. And so this is a process, it's not going to happen fast. Okay, so now I need to work on smoothing this and getting it nice um, and flat, and then I also have to think about the shape that I want. Do I want to keep this you know, really round. Do I want it to look like a skull shape? Because that's a choice if you want. So I have a few tools that you can use to work on the form. You can use a wooden spoon, use the back of it. This is called paddling, and you can sort of paddle out the high points and work on making it smoother. So that's option number one. I really like that choice. You can also use your elephant ear sponge. You can use this to smooth out. Make sure you get the sponge wet at the sink. You can use it to smooth out some points. You can also use your fingers. Those are great tools. And I have these wire loop tools, which look like this, and clean these off. And you can also use these to kind of pull off some of the high clay. So like if you have just like a little bit too much in one section, you want to take some of it off, you can use these as well. So I'm going to keep working on this and make it smooth, OK? All right, so let's pretend I'm done. It should look something like this. This is one that I have done. See, it's nice and smooth, okay? I decided to go with more of a round form. You do have to decide which part you want to be the bottom of this, because it needs to be able to sit flat on a table. So decide where you want this to be flat. So I'm gonna go with this here. And on this flat side, as soon as you're done completely smoothing this out, you need to do two things, two very, very important things. Okay, the first is your name, which you knew I was going to say. So make sure you get your name carved in. You can use the needle tool on the base. Okay, the other thing you need to do is take this needle tool and you need to put a hole right through the bottom of this. You should feel those paper towels. Okay, it should be squishy. And hopefully, you know why we want a hole, but we want a hole so that the air that's on the inside of this is not trapped anymore and can escape. Because we know, because we know a lot about chemistry, when hot air goes into the kiln, or when air gets heated up, so when I put these into the kiln and that hot, that air starts to get hot, it's going to expand. And if we didn't have a hole for the air to escape, it's going to expand and it's going to explode. And we don't want that. I don't want that for your pieces and I don't want that for the kiln. Okay? So do a good job. I'm going to double check these. So make sure you show them to me when you're done. 
So I would keep working on this, and then when I'm finished, you can go on to step two, which is adding your textures and your carving.